Have you ever sat around a bonfire pit under a sky of glittering stars and realized how magical a campfire can be? I think in many ways Mops is a campfire, a gathering place that draws us in toward warmth and conversation. Because the same things happen around a campfire as happen around a table with a group of women. Sometimes we are mesmerized by the swirling and flickering magnificent light of words that are shared that we feel compelled to sit quietly as we take it all in. And then other times the air will be filled with raucous laughter as we struggle to find our breath amidst the honesty and the goodness of being with friends. This atmosphere is what we have dreamed about this year as we spent months praying about our theme for the year. We are so excited to see how this theme restores our souls and how spiritual conversations develop as we huddle around our common source of heat and light where we can all find healing. So our theme for this year is a fierce flourishing. And the reason we chose these particular words is because as we all sat around a table, there was a group of women, we all felt like we had spaces in our lives that needed some flourishing. Spaces in our souls that were weary and dry and this is when we realized that this was our year to experience life in all of its glittering glory and that we wanted to invite all of our sisters to do the same so here is what we are going to do we are going to embrace rest we're going to notice goodness and we are going to celebrate lavishly so first let's talk about embracing rest this is the year to let go of exhaustion as a status symbol and productivity as a measure of worth what if one of the most life-giving activities that would contribute to our flourishing is welcoming rhythms of rest and play into our lives? Creating healthy rhythms in our life is one way we nourish the weary spots in our souls. Second, noticing goodness. Could it be possible that we don't need new things, but rather new eyes to see what we already have? What if we regained our sense of vision, this acute resolve to find hope in the cracks of the mire of the mundane? Noticing what is good gives us the gift of perspective and reminds us that the sacred is closer than we think. And then lastly, celebrating lavishly. This is probably my favorite. Celebrating brings life into our days. Could it be that commemorating moments might help us to become more alive, to remember what is good and become masterful at recognizing it? How would life change to regularly invite friends into our stolen moments with uninhibited dancing, the best food, while gathered around the biggest table with the deepest conversations. Lavish celebrations can be sacred markers that help remind us who we are. Okay, so before we jump into a conversation about all of the fascinating stuff in our Bible passage for the year, let's chat about curriculum. So I occasionally get emails from leaders who wonder why our curriculum and materials don't have more traditional Bible study in them. And we actually do that very intentionally. Because MOPS isn't a Bible study. MOPS is a safe place to invite all sorts of women into a conversation about Jesus. And we believe that the best place for spiritual conversations to happen is actually in the context of friendship. We believe that you know every mom in your group way better than we do. And that's why we give you a starting point with content that sparks deep questions so that you can take it to the next level. So the really cool thing is that your group is engaging in the kingdom work of inviting women who are at all different places in their spirituality to gather, to share, and to explore together what their next step toward Jesus might look like. And that will look different for every woman in your group. Okay, so let's chat about Isaiah 55. So Isaiah 55 is often referred to as the great invitation. We like to think of it as a great invitation to a party, right? A kingdom party where God shows up and dances his booty off and everyone can't help but join him on the dance floor. See, Isaiah 55 is an account of God's people being freed from captivity and heading to their homeland. And what we read about is their welcome home party, essentially. It's described as a bountiful feast of satisfying foods hosted by none other than God himself. And so one of my favorite parts of this chapter is in the beginning where God repeats three times to come. Because see, everyone is invited, including the thirsty and the broken. And let's be honest, we all have thirsty hearts, spots in our souls that just feel bone dry, where our hopes have dried up or our dreams have wilted. Sometimes we're haunted by this persistent thirst, right? 
So God invites us to a party where he's serving a banquet that quenches all of the longings that each of us has. Another cool thing about Isaiah 55 is how it talks about creation noticing the goodness of God and showing us what it looks like to flourish. We read that the trees clap their hands and the mountains sing, and perhaps the most profound part of all is where we read that the thorns become cypress and briars become myrtle. Now, I just love this part, and it's important because in Genesis, a curse comes on all of creation, right? And part of that curse was that man's labor would be made hard and frustrating by thorns and briars. In Genesis, it says, Cursed is the ground because of you, in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you. And so what Isaiah 55 is saying is that the curse will be lifted, that thorns and briars will be forgotten and in their place will come things of beauty and usefulness, as evidenced in Isaiah 55 by the cypress and myrtle turning green and regaining their life. And here's the coolest part of all of this. When Jesus was crucified, he wore a crown of thorns on his head which was a graphic way of saying he is carrying the curse for us and ushering in a new experience where we are freed from the curse and can enjoy the cypress and myrtle in their full flourishing. We can enjoy creation in its full flourishing. And so this passage in Isaiah is so full of goodness that I hope you are as excited as we are to spend a year learning about flourishing in God's kingdom. So this year at Mops, May we become a home for found wanderers, redeemed prisoners, explorers at the edge of their comfort, all of us who were one-time captives, now dancing with unearned freedom because we have regained the eyes to see the goodness all around us. May we invite more women into our tribe and learn to love them fiercely. And may we all reach our hands toward the warmth of Isaiah 55 that flickers and dances as we each find the forgotten parts of our souls that reflect God's kingdom and that are re-emerging as we journey toward a fierce flourishing.